So MAGFest has just come and gone for this year, and this is the second year in a row I missed it after having gone year after year after year since, what, 2015, 2014, something like that. I honestly don't remember at this point. But I was at a bunch of them, and it came up on TCR uh, that we should talk about some memories, and I wanted to give it its own space. So we're going to talk about MAGFest memories. Because over the years, a lot of stuff happened uh, at that convention uh, that, that was pretty awesome. And a lot of it impacted uh, how I enjoy video games today. Okay, so the big thing about conventions is like the people you meet. If you've gone to a specific convention for years and years, there's either panels or maybe you'll just bump into people there. Um, so a few of the people I met... The first one, probably the biggest name, was Derek Alexander, who I met briefly the very first time I went. And the story goes, uh, Thursday I couldn't go. MAGFest was Thursday to Sunday. So uh, I, wouldn't, I wasn't able to go Thursday. I was going to go Friday morning. So there I was in bed on Thursday night knowing I was going to leave for MAGFest in the morning. And I was really excited because just a couple years prior, uh, Derek, who had been with RetroWare TV at the time, he was releasing these videos every year of like, this is MAGFest, and you'd see the parties and people dancing and stuff, and it just had me really pumped. I was like, I gotta go to MAGFest. So three in the morning, I woke up and just said, you know what? I'm just gonna drive down there. So I drove down there uh, in the middle of the night, which is probably not, not the best idea. And I finally, you know, I got my badge, and the place was empty, and I got into the arcade, and lo and behold, there was Derek Alexander playing uh, the X-Men arcade game with a few other people. And I had on my tattered uh, uh, Starship Amazing shirt. And I was like, yeah, it's cool. So I got to meet him briefly. This is a story I told on TCR this week as well. But that was a good time. Um, I got to see the Blistered Thumbs panel. I, I mean, saw a lot of panels, but that's one that sticks out to me. Because this was when uh, John Tron, I think, was at the peak of his popularity. And John Tron showed up that year. And the Blistered Thumbs panel was at the very same time. So I wandered into the blistered thumbs panel, like because I wanted to see John Tron and I just was in the wrong line. <laughs> and when I got in, I was like, oh, I guess I'm not that big of a fan of John Tron. I'm exhausted. We'll just watch this. And it was blistered thumbs at a time when like all of the recognizable names were gone. Like there was angry Joe wasn't there. Nobody I, I, I had ever seen before was there, but it was a bunch of guys talking about games and I was exhausted. Just like, yeah, I'll watch this, man. I think there was like seven other people with me. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I don't mean in my group. I mean, seven other people in the entire uh, uh, panel just sitting and watching. They were opposite John Tron in his peak. And that's what everyone wanted to see. Uh, the biggest or the most fun, like met um, type memory was the one year that I was uh, chilling with vintage video game geek. We went to a dinner with uh, Game Study One, Arcade Impossible, and NES Complex. And there were a couple other people there. Um, but that was what I remember. Uh, um, Vintage, who, who is gone now, uh, we played... Gone from YouTube. I don't know if he's dead or not. I doubt he's dead. But he, <laughs> he, uh, we played uh, games in the arcade. We chilled. It was really awesome. It was a good time. And I didn't know who NES Complex was at the time and I ended up looking him up when I got home and yeah we had fun it was a good time um the proto men I saw them there a couple of times and uh they were in, in the vendor hall um the proto men had a booth and I bought uh, several records from them and the guy who was selling records uh it was the 10 inch record for like the single for Act 3, if you're a Proto Man fan. It was, uh, um, but anyway, the guy was like, yeah, this record was $10,000. And I was like, really? It's still like $10 for me though, right? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. It was really cool. It was an awesome guy. Awesome guy. And then it turned out when I saw them on stage later and you know was looking through the materials, that was one of the guys in the band. And he's an older guy and he's bald and had a big beard. And I should have, that thought should have crossed my mind. Uh, but at the time it didn't. And then afterwards I was like, yo, uh, cause the proto men are awesome. I ended up seeing them part of a proto men show. The last time I went, I think, um, they hadn't come for many years and they were way late and I was going to pick up my son in the morning. So I only got to see a little bit of it, but 
I love the Proto Men. They're really good. And I got several of their records. Uh, got a lot of really cool records from the, the vendor stuff. Um, other things that happened, weird, notable things. I, I, for, for like three or four years, I went with my buddy, Angie, who uh, is one of my best friends. This guy I knew, you know, when I was in third grade, I knew this guy all the way up until we both became adults and kind of went our separate ways. And I still keep in touch with him when I can. But we went to MAGFest together and got a place for, for a, a couple of years. And one year he sold like a couple of really choice uh, Sega Genesis games to a dealer. One of them was Snow Bros, like an authentic Snow Bros, and I can't remember what the other one was. I want to say it was Panorama Cotton, but I can't remember. But we were talking about, like, I don't know, $1,200 worth of uh, of Sega Genesis games and two cartridges at the time. I remember that was a big deal. He sold those off, and we were talking about rare uh, um, uh, Genesis games, and I was just like, take me to school, man. What, what you know, <laughs> it's cool. Um and uh, the times I went with Angie, I learned a lot because we would get, we would bring computers. I'd bring my you know the Panzer to the hotel room, and we would hook it up to the TV. Or the last couple of years we went, the TV would would lag hard, so we would hook it up to a little TV or just hook it up to the lagging TV and watch. That is weird. Uh, and I remember distinctly the year I got really into arcade sticks and I ended up with, I, I guess I don't have it handy, but I ended up with a, a Ken Bob Stadium, which is a $200 arcade stick. Ridiculous purchase. This is the dumbest thing in the world. I definitely sh should not have bought this thing, but I had my arcade stick and he bought an arcade stick himself, which I don't think he has anymore. And we brought them back to the hotel room. And I remember like playing shmups, shmups and fighting games on our computer, our computers with our arcade sticks that is an amazing memory um he introduced me to dodon patchy which i love it's, a, it's a, a game i love very much now uh, thankfully i was able to get it, it has since come out on steam it's expensive it's 30 bucks but uh personally I, it was it was worth it for me personally because the attachment to the game um so Dodon Patchy, and uh, I remember playing King of Fighters with NG. I would always go through and install all of my fighting games on Steam before we went to MAGFest. NG's a big SNK guy, so he's always really... he was uh, He's a big SNK guy and a big fighting game guy, so he was really good at King of Fighters. And I, <laughs> I remember playing King of Fighters 2002 Unlimited Match and trying to get good at it, and he was eventually he was... At one point, he was just like, just stop. This is embarrassing, and it's not fun for either one of us. Just stop. <laughs> it's fun for me. At least it is looking back on it. Uh, I remember the harsh, bitter cold. You know, it's first week in January. It's very cold. First week in January on uh, um, right off of the Potomac. So the wind would come off the river, and it would sweep through the convention center. So whatever temperature it was outside, you you better believe it felt, you know, 10 times as cold walking from the hotel room to the convention center. Because we only ever actually stayed in the hotel at the convention center one time. One time. Um, and that was the one year my wife set everything up. After that, they had like a lottery system. You couldn't get a room. <laughs> we even, uh, um, one year... NG set it up so that we had a room at the hotel that was right across the street. And when we got there, they were like, we're overbooked. We're moving you to this other hotel that we had stayed at before and didn't like very much. Um, and so I, I'll never forget the bitter, harsh cold of walking to the convention center. So parking was a thing. Another funny, it's funny now. It was terrifying then, but memory was, I parked my car in one of the parking garages and there's a lot of parking garages there. And I can't remember which floor I parked it on. And I didn't remember then either, but I left it in place the whole convention. Um, and then the end of the convention came and I was trying to go back to my car for something and it was bitter, harsh, cold and I was underdressed. So I was like this and I couldn't feel my fingers and I was like, Shh. and I was walking around in this like, you know, four, five, six story uh, uh, parking garage. And I, I didn't know what floor my car was on. So I was beeping the thing so that it, my car would honk its horn. But because the parking garage was so big and so empty, I could hear the beep. 
I didn't know if it was above me or below me. And it was intolerably cold. So I just had to, like, keep looking. And it took longer than I'd like to admit <laughs> to find my car. So that's another reason the bitter, harsh cold of MAGFest is baked into my memory. That, and then one year when I drove there, it was so icy outside. It was, like, not safe to be driving. And I could not see properly out of my windshield. But I was like, video games, it doesn't matter. I got to get to the video games. It's all that matters. Whatever the risk is, I'm willing to accept it. Um, but thankfully I made it down there somehow. So that was another thing. Uh, another thing that happened was, oh, people I met, this is one I forgot. I left off movie, Bob, right? The game overthinker, Bob Chipman, uh, just before, um, he, he I, I'm just going to say just before he slid off track and became somebody I, I wasn't interested in, you know, uh, I got my picture taken with him. I don't know where that is now, but somewhere, uh, I have a picture of me and Bob Chipman, <laughs> Uh, which is yeah, it's good times, I guess. He did a panel that at the time I was uh, entertained enough to watch, what have you. Uh, I did my first ever Magic the Gathering event at MAGFest. I did a Magic the Gathering draft with Hemrock and, and uh, Sean. My goodness, Sean the Gaming Beast. Ga uh, a Gaming Beast 82 came over from, from Germany. Uh, and we had, this is great. That was... I think this is the last time I went. Yeah, and we went. We got a um, uh, um, an, an Airbnb from this lady who had like a son who worked in the movie industry. Um, so she had a, a, like a really nice entertainment center set up and a lot of really weird like movie posters for movies that the son had worked on as like a director of photography or something. What I remember the most is a life size movie poster of Undercover Brother. If you ever remember the movie Undercover Brother, that was like a weird thing. Life size movie poster with like decorative lighting pointed on it. Like it was a super special thing. That's pretty funny. Mm. Um, last two notes. First time I went, I went out in the middle of the night. I remember that. There's actually a video of that if you dig back into the old. Uh, I don't know how far you can get digging through, just raw digging through old videos on a channel, but somewhere I've got a MAGFest video of me like half awake looking for coffee because I was still a coffee drinker at the time, not being able to find it and just generally be, being, uh, not having fun and not, well, not finding fun to have and not finding anything I wanted and just being like just uncomfortable, but loving it at the same time. You could find that video somewhere <laughs> on the 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 bowels of uh of the tiger claw radio uh, um youtube channel and records I, it, every year acquisitions is a thing because of the uh um uh the, you know any any uh place has its vendors oh also duke i met duke from the from the cartridge club down there duke what's up brother i hope you're having fun i hope i hope you're safe uh i think that's everybody i met i think so if I met you and I left it out, I'm sorry. Don't be mad. Uh, but what's I saying? Give me a second to remember what I was saying because I honestly cannot remember. Yeah, acquisitions are a big thing, right? You go to a convention and uh, you do the, uh, the the vendor halls and stuff like that. And you get your stuff and there's most people who go to conventions, they'll do a video where it's like, these are the games that I bought or whatever. You know, the big joke in my circle is I am a consumer. I like to purchase things. Let's look at them. Uh, and I was the same way. Um, but the uh, uh, specifically the records. Multiple times I hit the proto men hard. The first time was was when I was able to get act one and then also the chiptune cover record from them and then years later when they showed up again i got their act three single uh and then their i, I can't think of what it's called off the top of my head but their cup you know the, the the if you're a proto man fan they did that double record set of cover cover songs from the 80s not the queen one but the, the one of like a bunch of different bands as good stuff there was another band I never saw there, but I bought a couple of their records. I can't think of what their name is, but they did instrumental heavy metal covers of Mega Man. I bought their Mega Man record, which I believe is now like a collector's item. At least if you want to get it off of eBay, it's like 80 plus dollars. And they also did one for Zelda, which I uh, purchased. Those were both awesome. Uh, I want to say 8-bit weapon, but it wasn't 8-bit weapon. It was 8-bit 
something. I'm sorry, I can't think of the name of it. But uh, yeah, I got some really cool records, and of course, really cool video games. Um, I <laughs> there were several years where where I was taking home an arcade stick every year. Um, I'm, at first, it was like a sixty dollar Canba starter arcade stick, which I believe I do have that one handy. Nope, no, I don't. Uh, <laughs> oh wait, yeah, I do. Hang on. Yeah, here it is. This is the Canba Q1, which is sixty dollars. Uh, if if you want to order one now. I don't know what they cost. It's not too different. Um, they might not be called the Q1 anymore, but it's whatever Canva's entry stick is. Uh, it was 60 bucks at the time. That's a great stick. If you're wondering what, like, like if you're on the fence and kind of want a fight stick, but but you're not sure, that get the Canva entry stick. That That's where I should have stopped. And then I bought a lot of the system-specific sticks. Like, I got my... Uh, um, my Sega Genesis stick and I got a PS one stick that I got rid of and I got a Wii stick that I eventually got rid of and stuff like that. That was good times. Got a lot of Atari games over there. I got a pretty big Atari 2600 collection for a long time. It was, um, whatever 2600 game I could find, <laughs> you know, I, I bring home like, I don't know, four or five games a year or something like that. Always, always something for the Atari 2600 collection. Good times. Uh, as far as stuff that I actually played there that's memorable, um, what sticks out to me the most are the things that you can't play anywhere else. Like in the last couple of years, one of the things they would do is they'd have a shooting gallery for light gun games. And I always checked out the shooting gallery because that who, who's got something like that set up? Maybe if you're an enthusiast, you might have a tube TV with a Nintendo zapper. Anything beyond that, and you got somebody who's like a hardcore collector, right? Does anybody casually have the light gun set up for the Sega Master System? Probably not. Uh, but they had that kind of stuff there, which was really cool. That was one thing. I also remember, what what's the name of that um, original Xbox game? where you play in the, you know, you're a mech driver and, and it has the special controller that's only for that game where it's it's a mech cockpit. <laughs> and if you want to get your own, it's like 200 bucks plus. What is that game called? Hang on. Steel Battalion. That was it. One year I got to play Steel Battalion with the, the controller and everything. I didn't know how to get it running. Like I didn't get very far, but I got to play Steel Battalion for like 10 minutes. Darn it. Um, I remember when uh, Oculus Rift was like the new hot thing. They had an Oculus Rift set up. And I remember walking up and then saying, oh, hey, look, there's the Rift. This guy's playing it. I guess I'll wait in line and look. And then I turned behind me and realized there was like 20 people waiting. And they were like, yeah, there's this thing closes in 45 minutes and there's no room to add new people to the line. So it doesn't matter how long you're willing to wait. You're not going to be able to do it. Uh, so that was the thing. And of course now years have passed and who cares about the Oculus Rift? <laughs> I realize the VR is still around, but yeah. What are you going to do? We ended with uh, uh, MAGFest with the realization that the price was going up and up and up and up and up and up. And the most fun that we had the last year we went was just hanging out in the room. Even looking back, um, the fondest memories are like playing with our arcade sticks in the room. And, you know, me and my friends, we're all adults now, you know, <laughs> of adult age. So, you know, we, we can't do like we did in third grade where I can just throw my arcade stick on my shoulder and roll up to Sean's house in Germany and be like, hey, bro, you know, <laughs> let's play some uh, let's play some steam games. Fire up your your uh, fire up your tower. I miss being able to do that with my friends when I was a kid. But yeah, that's my fest. It was a good time. Um, if if you're in the area when they do it and you feel safe, you should go. I'll I'll, I'll go again. I think once, you know, all this craziness with the sickness is over. I don't know if I'll go every year because it costs a lot more than it used to. But I would definitely go again. Thanks for watching, everybody.